Hi, uh, so if you're looking at this video, chances are you want to find a way to actually view your images. And QPath is an excellent platform both for image visualization as well as image analysis. But I'll be talking more about the former and how you can simply view your images, take some nice screenshots, put them into a PowerPoint, and later on, a little bit more uh, advanced image visualization techniques should you choose to create, you know, some fancier figures. <laughs> Anyways, you'll need two things. The first thing you will need is the latest version of QPath. So in the following recording, I'll be using QPath version 0.3.1, but any older version should still have the same workflow for loading in your images, viewing them, and taking screenshots. The next thing you're going to need are images. So I'm going to be recording this video using sample Brightfield images from our publicly available um, repository. And I've already gone ahead and downloaded these two images shown on screen. So once you've downloaded the images, first thing you want to do is create a folder called sample images and just dump all of your images there. The next thing you want to do is to create a new folder and this folder will be for something called your QPath project. And this is sort of a database of where your images are located and what viewing settings you had last saved on them. So we'll call this sample project. Now, uh, after that, you will want to download and install QPath. It's supported both for Windows Mac and Linux. So just download the latest uh, version and follow the installation instructions listed on each. Once QPath is installed, the buttons I'm pressing, the tools I'm using should be very similar regardless of what platform you're used for. So right now I'm using Windows 10, but if you have a Mac, it's going to be no problem at all. So now that you have it downloaded and installed, we can go ahead and launch it. So I'm just going to launch the older version. It will ask me, or it usually asks me if I need it to update, but I'll skip on updating it for now. And first thing we want to do is click the button that says create project. Now, a while back, we made an empty folder called sample project, and you have to make sure it's empty. That's really important. All you need to do is copy the location of this empty sample project, paste it right here where it says select folder and hit enter and then select folder. And now you'll see you've created a sample project or a project but with no images loaded into it. Next thing we want to do is populate this with some images. So we can click the add image button it'll ask us to either drag and drop images so you can literally drag and drop them right here or choose from the options below um, the options below meaning we can choose files input url from clipboard or from path list we'll go with uh, choose files for now so we'll click this button and then we'll navigate to where our images are stored so that would be right here sample images same as before we copy the path paste it here, and we select all of the images that we'd want to potentially open for use in screenshots, but there's no harm in loading them all. And then uh, a couple other optional things, which aren't crucial because we're not doing image analysis, but are good to set anyways, is we want to set the image type. So if we're doing Brightfield microscopy, specifically dab staining, we'll click this one. If it's an h &E image, we'll use this one. If it's some other image, like maybe Mason's trichrome staining, we can click other, but don't worry about it too much. This doesn't generally make a big uh, thing if we're just loading in images for viewing. Or fluorescence, or other, or you can just leave it empty. In this case, um, I believe the images we have are of dab staining, so I'll just click Brightfield HDAB. And then we click import. Give it a second to load the images in. And now they're loaded. And you can see a nice little thumbnail of how they are if you want a quick preview. 
So let's go ahead and load the first image. Great. Uh, and there's a couple of things shown on screen at the moment, in addition to our image. We have a little thumbnail, which shows the macroscopic view, if we're ever, you know, zoomed in. If we want to disable that, all we have to do is click this button. Now, I'm going to be clicking a lot of buttons, uh, but it might not be visible by itself in this talk. So what I'm going to do, just for my case, you don't actually have to do it for yours, is I'm going to enable so something called input display. And what this does is anytime I do a left click or right click, I scroll in, I scroll out, I press a shortcut like Control S, it'll show what I pressed. So again, you don't have to do this, but for the sake of the video, and because, you know, ultimately I'm recording this for you, the client, I, I want to make this as easy and as enjoyable uh, as possible in terms of viewing your images, because, you know, it doesn't have to be stressful. Um, so we have our image. You can use the scroll button to zoom in or out. We can drag to pan around. Um, and we can at any point take a screenshot of what's being shown in this square over here by going to edit, copy to clipboard, current viewer. And once you've clicked it, you might think nothing actually happened, but it's copied. Now you just have to go into some other platform like Microsoft PowerPoint um, and you can do control D or whatever your paste shortcut is. Maybe if you're on a Mac command key and paste it. Now, as I said before, this includes everything that was captured in the field of view. The little thumbnail in the top right corner, the little uh, box showing the X and Y coordinates of your mouse on screen, as well as the R, G, and B values. And it's a little hard to make up, but there's a scale bar below all of this brown dab staining. Now, let's say we want to kind of spruce up our images a little bit. Uh, you know, we don't want to see this thumbnail. We can click this button and it'll hide it. We want to clean up our, the bottom right thing, uncheck that. Maybe we want more real estate on our screen. We can close the analysis pane. So now we have this nice little way for quickly viewing the areas. So zoom in as much as you want. Same as before, copy to clipboard. Uh, you used to be able to do control C and control V, but I think control uh, C was temporarily disabled in this current version, but it's no problem at all. You know, it's one extra click. And here, let me just make a couple of extra blank slides. Anyways, let's uh, copy it again to clipboard. Paste. So now we have a nice figure. Um, now, here's where I'm going to show some slightly more advanced stuff. Maybe a reviewer would ask, hey, what does the uh, brown staining look by itself? Um, now, of course, this is a dab stained image. We have to find a way of actually isolating the brown stain. The way we do, we do this is we need to tell it what pure brown is, what pure hematoxylin is, and what pure background is. And we can either manually set the values, but that's kind of a pain, or we can do it automatically. We select a small area that contains representative colors of all of them using the rectangle selection tool. And this will just quickly draw a rectangular annotation. And we go to analyze pre-processing, estimate stain vectors. Uh, you want to click yes, click auto, press OK, and then press OK again. Now, if we press the brightness and contrast button right up here, we can view it as it is in its original mode. We can look at the hematoxylin mode by itself, hematoxylin channel. And you know, we can tune the brightness and contrast to make it a little bit more appealing. We can view the dab staining by itself. Here, let me just make this a smidge darker. Um, didn't do the best job of separating, but it's reasonable. 
uh, we can look at optical density sum, which is basically inversely proportional to the amount of light that can pass the sample when imaged through a microscope. Normalized optical density colors, and generally the rest aren't that important because more often than not, you'll never really end up using the majority of these. Um, but the main ones you'd want to use are just the original and typically the dab staining. And yeah, so you want to take a screenshot, same as before, current viewer. Um, and you paste it. Um, maybe you'd want to do the main window content, full screenshot. Really, it's up to you. There's no wrong answer. Nothing you do here will ever change the underlying data of your images. So there's no way you can modify your images even by accident. Um, if you wanted to say, draw someone's attention to a specific region, you can use this annotation tool, either draw a circle like this, draw a square over here. Maybe you want to outline a small area like this and you can kind of just fill it in if you wanted to or maybe you want a kind of a crisper snapping to you know maybe you want to snap perfectly to this uh to the lumen of this blood vessel so you would click this magic wand tool and just casually draw it in perfect you've just highlighted a lumen of a blood vessel like if I had to guess, it has quite a bit of erythrocytes, maybe a couple of immune cells just scattered around inside of it. Anyways, um, you know, anything more than that, and I would say it's time for image analysis, but that can be a separate video by itself. Um, that being said, we also offer image analysis as a uh, service, and typically, you know, I use QPath for all of the analysis orders. It's a great platform. Uh, one last thing, if you wanted to go to the next image, you can just double click on this tab, click Save Changes if you made any annotations and you want to keep them, and you're on to your next image. It's loaded, it's in memory, good to go. So on that note, uh, I believe that should be more than enough to get some beautiful looking figures for any publication, lab meeting, conference, you name it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, feel free to contact Histoiz or even contact me directly at mark at histoiz.com. And yeah, thank you for your time. And I hope this was an informative session for everyone. <laughs>